Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today I'm excited to show you a new product that we're going to start our build on today. And it's a brand new kit from Squadron. It's their first proprietary line of model kits. It's called the Hanabu 2. And it is a 70 second scale giant German what if 1946 UFO. Uh, looks like a really cool kit from the uh, pre-production shots that I've seen of it and I want to thank Squadron they were kind enough to send us out an early sample so we can get building on this and show you what it looks like inside it's gonna be great because it uh, I've had a lot of people over the last couple of months ask me hey why don't you build some airplanes well this kind of kind of like an airplane because it flies like an airplane but we get to build and paint and weather it like a tank so it will be kind of a little different type of build so uh, I'm really excited to open it up so let's get started on it Okay, uh, I've started cutting the parts off the sprue, and I thought before we start doing any assembly, we would kind of give you a little rundown on the parts. And the first thing you'll notice with this kit is just how massive it really is. Uh, this is 15 inches uh, across, and the way that they've uh, done it is all of the parts have these big holes and pegs that um, dry fitting everything so far, and everything is fit really, really tightly together. You've got three for the outer hull and then these two pieces will go here with this dome and just like i said just dry fitting everything together everything's very nice and tight just pop this in here and show you and oops there it goes and you get a nice tight fit all the way around i was already like i said dry fitting it mostly together and i don't think we'll have any problems at all with the construction it is all recessed panel lines plus the top has quite a bit of rivet detail which is really going to show off all of our weathering and highlighting that we do later on when we build the kit. So excited about that. I do have to do some more sanding on this. I just cut these off just a minute ago. thought I would start telling you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of these pieces sanded up and then we'll start our construction. I'm going to probably go ahead and use a mixture of CA glue, a little extra on the inside of all these pieces since they are so big, and of course the regular Tamiya glue and we've we've set these pieces all in place now and you can see all of this lines up really well now that we've got it all sanded and so what i'll do is i'll use some like i said some plastic glue on the inside of here and might even put a little strip of styrene in here as well just to make sure that it stays nice and steady but it's lining up really well to begin with on that and we'll go ahead and on to the next part well i've let this dry for a little while and it's actually holding up very well. I don't think I'm gonna to have to put any extra styrene on the inside of this. I did run a little bit of the liquid cement all around the dome here and then put some pressure onto that. So that really helped lock this thing together as one big piece. Now, the next thing we're gonna be putting in are our door flaps for the landing gear. And those are just gonna drop right into place just like this. And then we have a, a cover plate that'll go over it and lock all of that in so i think what we can do is we can glue this part in and the doors will remain uh still openable because we'll probably have it in the down position with the landing gear on it but this way if you want to you can seal it off close it up like that so we're going to go ahead and put fit all these on next just letting this uh, glue set up on this and it kind of dawned on me this piece right here for the landing gear on either side is technically acting as the stabilizer between the two halves of the uh, the plastic because it's filling in the seam so put a little extra liquid cement underneath this piece right here and that'll lock it together even better quick building note as you're assembling these uh, make sure that you have that seam match up on all the way around. I almost glued one into place without checking it to make sure it lines up so that circle goes all the way around. Now when it comes to assembling they have a uh, like a vehicle entry ramp and it's a two-part ramp that will unfold down here. If you're going to have the uh, the ramp up all you need to do is just slide this into place straight down after it's assembled and it'll lock right in and then you can just click it right up into shape. If you're gonna have it open, you leave this unlatched, and then there's a, a framework that goes over the inside. That way, if you look up inside, you won't just see a, uh, a hollowed out cavity. You'll see the inside of this. 
and then this, whoops, sorry about that. And then we'll actually go ahead and attach this part on once we get all the landing gear and things on and that. So since we're probably gonna have the, uh, the platform down, we're just gonna lock it into place right now during painting and we'll just leave this piece out completely. This is uh, another little building tip. Uh, I started assembling the top of the saucer here. And this is made up of three equal parts that go together, which can be a little bit difficult holding into place. So I found the best way to do is to lay the parts down, start gluing them up, but have your, your very top of the saucer ready to go too, and place that in. And what this does, this is kind of like framework for the, uh, the parts to stay perfectly round. That way you know later on you're not going to have a warpage or anything on top of it. So just ran so a couple of beads of the uh, liquid cement inside and out on it and it let it dry for a good hour and it's ready to go. I've also began dry fitting the interior part of the UFO and you get uh, three different consoles plus nine chairs which I haven't put all the chairs in and supposedly this is the uh, the reactor that they had that could actually fly the vehicle so I started sanding that up because it's in a, a two-part uh, off the sprue so once that once I get all this part in here and we'll actually go ahead and probably paint this up separately then the, we've installed some of the interior pieces on here as well and then this will just lock right into place we'll get all that glued down and that just pops right in fits real well and then I showed you earlier that that'll fit right on top so as you can see it's all fitting very very well together and then this will just slide right inside so I will go ahead and finish off putting all these parts in there and gluing them into place and then we'll show you more of the painting in a little while. We're going to uh, paint up the landing gear next. What I've done here is uh, I haven't actually gluing these together. We're just pushing them together and holding them in place and that's because we have to put a center wheel in the middle of this. And now we're going to use our Vallejo metal paints that go on really, really well, do a nice metal finish. So I'm just going to put these down. We're going to spray them just with a can of uh, TS-14, which is to me is gloss black. Give them a nice good coat over the entire things and let that dry and then we can go ahead and put the, uh, the Vallejo on that. And remember, while you're using your Vallejo uh, paints, it has to be gloss black that goes underneath. So that's why we use the TS-14 from Tamiya. One other thing I'm going to point out to you as well, uh, at this point, the instructions want you to go ahead and, and glue the glass in. We're obviously not going to do that right away. We're going to leave the, uh, the top unsecured so we can do most of our painting and then come back, take that off, and then glue the glass in them later. It's just going to save us a lot of time from trying to have to mask all the, the little pieces of glass all around the outside. Also, while we were painting up the landing gear, I also uh, painted up the center, which is the levitation unit on the UFO. Uh, the same magnesium color that uh, the, the landing gear was going to be painted. And you'll see I also started painting up the interior of the spacecraft white. Now the uh, control panels will all be painted over as well too. I just put a, a nice coat down. I thought it should look nice and clean and futuristic inside the center of this. And while we had the airbrush out, we went ahead and put a coat of flat black on the wheels as well as the chairs for the inside of the uh, cockpit. Okay, I have all the uh, the wheel assemblies put together now, and also we painted all the guns. And then earlier I showed you that we were going to lock in all of the turrets on the bottom down here, so these are all ready to go. And I also did just did the uh, the quick glue together of the main hull here that we'll start to put together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start doing some of the exterior painting so we can start assembling most of this. Okay, I'm just going to show you right now what I'm going to end up in doing off camera. This is the whole uh, cockpit area. Now, we still haven't glued this down. This is just temporarily. Um, I went in and puttied uh, the seams all around the edges right here because the seam was just a little bit too big where they met up. But I used the uh, acrylic putty that uh, Vallejo uses, and it comes out really good. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to place this into place. Put this into place, excuse me. And the gun assembly up here matches up with this little uh, little like driver's cockpit up here as well so that'll lock right into place what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and glue this into place just the way it is and we're gonna paint that as a sub assembly and then we'll paint the whole bottom like I was telling you earlier with um, with our paint now what I've ended up doing is I couldn't find the actual color that I needed you, with the mission model so they don't have the aircraft colors out yet but what I took was 95% uh, of, of the British light silver gray and 5% of just the plain blue 
mixed it up and it's actually the bottle shows it a little bit darker than it actually is inside but it looks like a pretty good copy of the uh, light blue that the Germans would paint underneath their vehicles and up the side. So what we'll end up doing is we're going to paint the entire bottom with this blue and then I'm going to see if I either want to do the top gray or use this blue again and then put all of our camouflage over it. Just Okay, so we have the bottom on our painting table ready to go, and we've added to our mission models paint 20% of their thinner and 10% of the polyurethane mix additive, that, which will help level out the paint and go on really smooth. So we're going to go ahead and take our airbrush and paint the entire bottom. Well, it took an awful lot of paint because this kit is absolutely massive in size, but I ended up liking the way the blue looked, and it looks very similar to what the World War II would be. Now, don't forget, we're going to put some really big uh, splinter camo on top of this, so that most of this blue is going to be disappeared after we put that on. But uh, what I'm going to do now is now that we've got this all completely covered in blue, I'm going to spray both pieces with uh, Tester's Dull Coat, and that's going to completely lock in the paint job that we have right now. Once we get the bottom done, we'll pop in all of our landing gear, our machine guns, or cannons actually, they're actually cannons on the bottom, and get the whole bottom ready. And then once we let the, uh, the dull coat dry on the top, we're going to go ahead and start taping off and uh, doing our camouflage on top of it. Showing you this portion of the video, after I got the blue all on, I started taking the time, about three hours, to mask the entire model um, and masked it twice. The first coat would be the green, the dark green that we put on, which you'll see in a few seconds here. And then after that had dried, I went ahead and did uh, a gray splinter camouflage over it as well. Spent a lot of time and effort doing it, and after it was all done, did not like the way it looked. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is paint over the entire thing with a more of like a medium type green to start a camouflage and then doing our splinter over top of that. Here is the uh, the green that I chose to go ahead and put on it. You'll also notice too I found a 72nd uh, scale uh, tank piece that I had in one of my display cases for a while and this is 72nd and so is this so you can see the size that this vehicle was going to be absolutely crazy and in, in for size wise uh, the green came out pretty good I actually didn't put it on very thick you can still see some of the uh, just slightly some of a mottled effect uh, kind of like when we do the black and white coat because we have the two different colors underneath so I kind of like the way that turned out so an error in the beginning turned out to be a good thing in the long run now I'm gonna take my Tamiya masking tape the uh, the real thin stuff and I like using the Tamiya one because it's very very thin it's got a very fine edge to it too so it doesn't leave much of a lip when you're going to paint it on it's also very low tack so it's not gonna pull up the other paint now I've sealed this again, we've clear coated over this, so it's completely protected this paint job. We're going to go ahead and do the first coat, which we're going to use our same dark green and dark gray that we did on the light blue, but just over the green coat now. Here is the uh, the green that I chose to go ahead and put on it. You'll also notice too, I found a 72nd uh, scale uh, tank piece that I had in one of my display cases for a while. And this is 72nd and so is this. So you can see the size that this vehicle was going to be. Absolutely crazy in, in for size wise. Uh, the green came out pretty good. I actually didn't put it on very thick. You can still see some of the... Uh, just slightly some of a mottled effect uh, kind of like when we do the black and white coat because we have the two different colors underneath so I kind of like the way that turned out so an error in the beginning turned out to be a good thing in the long run now I'm gonna take my Tamiya masking tape the uh, the real thin stuff and I like using the Tamiya one because it's very very thin it's got a very fine edge to it too so it doesn't leave much of a lip when you're going to paint it on it's also very low tack so it's not gonna pull up the other paint now I've sealed this again we've clear coated over this so it's completely protected this paint job we're gonna go ahead and do the first coat which we're gonna use our same dark green and dark gray that we did on the light blue but just over the green coat now so like I was telling you, I went ahead and did all the masking on the uh, the kit here. I used the yellow for the hard line because it's easy. And then the blue just as filler because we don't want to get any overspray around it. 
And also when you're attaching the blue, uh, the blue is a lot more tacky than the other one. So I mainly just push down just onto the yellow portion of it. This is just regular blue painter's tape for fill. But this way you're not going to end up pulling up anything too much. So we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, the black green on in for the camouflage next. A quick builder's tip, as you're spray painting a hard edge that's been masked, always spray towards the top of the, uh, the masking tape and never towards the edge. And this way you'll get a nice crisp line and you have no chance that the airbrush will lift up the tape from the air pressure that it's putting out. So I immediately pulled the uh, the tape off after we were done painting and like this camouflage pattern way way better with these colors. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a little bit more and I think I'm probably going to do like a black camouflage on here as well. Some more, some smaller patterns to break up in, inside here. Okay, we uh, put two coats of dull coat on, just two light coats to seal in our entire paint job. And the dull coat from Testers is shiny enough that we'll be able to head and go ahead and put the uh, the decals right on the kit. So uh, let's take care of that right now. Now. There is a lot of rivet detail on this, so we're going to use, after this dries up a little bit, we're going to put a couple of coats of Microsol on actually all the decals, and that way we'll get them to, to really fix onto the vehicle and go over all the little bumps and little cracks, things like that in it. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put the rest of the decals on, so that way you don't have to just watch me put that on, and then we'll put about probably about four or five coats of this on every like 15 minutes to soften them, and then seal them all back in, and then when I come back I'll show you what it looks like after all that's been done. We're going to go ahead now that the uh, the decals have all dried and we have shot another coat of dull coat over it to seal the decals in to protect them. We're going to just do some just some light weathering on especially all these rivet detail. We really want to make all that pop out quite a bit. So we're going to take a little bit of our thinner and just brushing all the rivet detail down to get the rivets wet first. And this will make our wash go on much, much easier, having it already wet to begin with. I'm just going to wet the general area that we're going to work on. That should be a big enough area that we can work with. And then we're just going to take our streaking grime and just start adding a little bit of... Uh, A little bit of the streaking grime to each one of the rivet tops. Now it's going to go on kind of dark to begin with, but if you've watched any of the other videos that we, I've done, you notice that we're going to take quite a bit of it off. And that is the re one of the reasons too that we want to put the uh, thinner down in advance. It's going to slow the drying so we have more time to, to mess around with it and get some nice streaks going. And once we get all streaking grime, you're going to take our other brush again, our other flat brush, and just start to remove some of the excess. And going in a, in a downward pattern, which will mimic any type of, uh, you know, rain or just gravity in general, just pulling down. And then keep cleaning your brush as you go. So you want the brush as clean as possible so it's just not smearing too much of it. And then keep dipping it into your thinner as well. So you can just start to pull down a little bit more. So this is a process now. It's not going to instantly be the way you want. You just got to keep working it over and working it over till you get to a 
a level that you really like. go back over with the dry brush again now that you've taken all the paint off so I'm going to keep working on this for a while and actually I started doing a little bit of it on the back too and hopefully it's drying enough that you can start to see it it's still a little shiny because the uh, the thinner hasn't completely dried out yet but as that dries that shininess will go away you can see how the how it rehydrates it and just makes it shiny again but you can start to see how we're starting to get some of the streaks over the entire vehicle and we're not going to go too too crazy with it mainly around the rivet area and a little bit around the top so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to off camera i'm going to finish up doing all of that all the way around and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like well here we are here's our uh, final reveal of the kit uh, to start off with as you can see it's just an absolute massive kit Beautiful uh, detailing, nice rivet detail on the outside. Uh, this is 70 second scale, like I said earlier, so we'll show that little tank up in front of it again to give you an idea of scale. Very, very big kit. Uh, there's about 128 parts in it. All went together very smoothly. Uh, there was only just a tiny bit of seam work I had to do just where the three saucer pieces went together, and it was just minor. I just... it wasn't all the way through, but we just wanted to make it match to all the other seams. But like I said, that was a minor uh, thing they have to do. I just noticed I didn't put the windows in yet, so I will go ahead and put those in as well. But like I told you earlier, we did not attach the top piece, so this is just going to pop out so we can pop the windows in later. That way you didn't have to worry about masking all around that. The kit, like I said, because it is so massive, you are going to use quite a bit of paint on it, but that's the fun part, at least for me in building, is that you can get to beating it up and weathering it. Now, my little thing is when I do any model, I kind of have a story in my mind, and this is supposed to represent kind of like if you found this thing sitting in an abandoned warehouse, kind of like what the picture showed, that it's been sitting in there for years and they came across it. It's got a little, not rust per se, but just like streaks of stuff and dirt and grime and stuff that's built up over the years. But um, very, very nice kit to put together, and that's the nice part. It's, it's, it was easy to put together and just had a lot of fun doing it. So. I would highly recommend that if you're looking for something like this, this is, this is definitely the way to go. The plastic was very nice and the decals were very nice as well. Sometimes you have some of these companies put decals out and the decals don't stick at all. These decals gave me no problem whatsoever. They took Microsol very well, laid down very smoothly. So, Also, kind of show you, lift this up right here. It has, uh, has the landing gear, of course, down there and the loading ramp. So all that can be displayed either open or closed. I, can't, I just chose to have it down because I probably won't do a diorama right away, but in my mind, it would look really cool in a diorama, especially with like 70 second scale stuff all around it, so it would be really cool. So I want to thank Squadron for getting us out an early copy of this to uh, show you guys and build it up for you. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.